Hi, I'm Christine, and today I'm going to do some trauma-sensitive yoga. Um, I've been a yoga teacher for 12 years, and somatic movement can be really helpful in dealing with trauma. When I say yoga, I'm talking about poses, asana, also breath work, and also mindfulness and meditation. Um, and I'm going to do some, some breath work, some poses, and also a brief thing of mindfulness. Um, and all of those are encompassed in yoga. So a little bit about breath. Breath work is the only function, breathing is the only function that we can do that's both automatic and controllable. When we're stressed, we take short, shallow breaths, and breath work can help us to regulate the nervous system. Intentional conscious breathing increases blood flow to the brain, which can stimulate neuronal growth. And so what we're gonna do is some um, hands-on breath awareness, and this can help us with our sense of self-compassion, our sense of safety, it can allow us to be present. Sometimes when we have trauma or PTSD, we're not able to be present because that trauma is, we're reliving that trauma. And so we're not actually able to be present. So what we can do is you can bring one hand to your belly, one hand to your chest. If it feels safe, it feels okay. You can allow your eyes to gently close. If that does not feel safe, you can leave your eyes open. And I encourage you to just check in with your breath initially. Just notice, how is it flowing? Are you feeling stressed? Are you taking those short, shallow breaths? Just for a few breaths, just observe. And when you've done that, for a few inhalations and exhalations, Try just making the inhalation and the exhalation a little bit deeper, slowing it down, just a nice deeper breath. And then there's a lot of different types of yogic breathing. Some of them are contraindicated for certain conditions. Um, I'm going to teach you one called the Durga breath, and that's the three-part breath, and it's safe for everybody. And the way that works, and you can continue with your hands on, or you can put your hands elsewhere if that's more comfortable. So this is called the three-part breath, and it's three parts, but they really just flow together. So you're going to imagine that you're going to fill your belly with air, fill your lower lungs with air, Fill your upper lungs with air, and as you release that breath, you go in the opposite direction, upper lungs, lower lungs to belly. So just try a couple of rounds of that. It all flows together. You just visualize the air flowing into and out of those spaces. It's a good way to help you become centered, become present, um, there's a bunch of different ways that yoga may be helpful for trauma. It can help us feel safe in our bodies. A lot of times when we experience trauma, we don't feel safe in our bodies. It can help us feel present. It can increase positive neuroplasticity. Um, movement of any type stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. Yoga can increase serotonin and dopamine, both feel-good hormones, and it can increase GABA, which calms the nervous system. It can also create balance. Bernie Clark said, we do not use the body to get into a pose. We use the pose to get into the body. And it's very, very important as you practice yoga to really listen to your body. Only you 
are in your body, only you know what feels okay, what feels safe. Um, and it's always okay to do something different, to take a break, to not engage with a particular pose if it doesn't feel right for you for any reason. It's really, really important um, to listen to your body. There shouldn't be any pain in yoga. Pain is your body's way of saying you need to do something different. Um, so I'm going to show you just a couple of different poses. You don't need to pull out your mat and do an entire hour-long class to get benefit from yoga. So this first pose is called cat and cow stretches. I'm going to do them from all fours. You can also do them from a seated position and from a standing position. So for these, from when you get into all fours, you want to make sure you stack your joints so your wrists are below your elbows, your knees are below your hips. You take a nice big inhale in, the crown of the head comes forward. Exhale, round your back like an angry cat. And then you just flow with your breath. Um, anytime that we do a spinal movement, we can increase awareness through our core create balance in our autonomic nervous system. So these are a spinal movement. And then I'm going to come into downward facing dog, which is also a spinal movement. I'm going to curl my toes up, press up into downward facing dog. And it's also important to note that there are modifications you can make. And if you can't get down on the mat, you can put both hands against a wall. You can widen your stance so that you're wider than what your hands are. And then you can bend down that way and do downward dog in that way. There's many, many ways to modify yoga poses um, so that they can be accessible to a variety of levels of flexibility and uh, ability. All right, so the next couple of poses I'm gonna do are for stabilization and grounding. I'm gonna stand with our feet hip width apart, our knees are loose, don't lock your knees, and step back with your right foot. Inhale, arms up, roll your shoulders back. This is warrior one. It's actually a, a heart opening posture. It helps, you can really check in here and feel your feet as they connect to the earth. Again, stabilization and grounding. Take a couple breaths here, feel how that feels. Can release your arms and if you turn out your back foot so that the heel of your front foot lines up with the arch of your back foot, and then inhale your arms up. This is warrior two. It's another nice, just stabilizing, grounding pose. And again, you don't need to pull out your mat and do an entire hour yoga class. You can do a couple of poses and, and feel some benefit. And if I was doing an actual class, then I would make sure that everything I did on one side, I did on the other. Um, there's, it's all about balance and it's really important to make sure that you do both sides. Since I'm just showing you some poses, I'm not actually doing a class, I'm not going to do both sides. I am going to come back into my mountain pose. And I'm going to bring my arms up and relax, my shoulders down. When we're stressed, a lot of times our shoulders are way up at our ears, we don't even realize. So, arms come up, relax, shoulders down. This is extended mountain. This can be helpful for, in addition to stabilizing, to be a little bit mindful. You can think about maybe what your mountain top looks like. From this pose, take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, swan dive down. You can touch your feet or as close as you can come to your feet. And again, we're moving the spine and we're coming anytime the head comes toward the ground. That's signaling the body 
that it's safe. But again, if you don't feel safe in any of these poses, if they cause you pain, it's always okay to do something else, to find something else that works for you. And then I'm gonna do tree pose. And again, this is one you can modify. You can hang on to something if you need to. Um, so shift your weight over to your left foot. Bring up the heel of your right foot and just check in. See how that feels for you. If you feel okay, if you feel like your balance is good, you can bring the sole of that right foot to the inside of the left leg. Hands can be on your hips. Hands can be in prayer position. Can be a big tall tree. You can have cactus or goalpost arms. And it's okay. It's okay if you need a chair for support, if you need the wall for support. It's important to meet yourself where you are um, in yoga. So this is just a pose that can give you some balance. If you fall out, you just get back in again. It's no big deal at all. So, just going to do a little bit of mindfulness of breath. Uh, those are some poses that you can do anywhere. Um, and again, it's really important. We think, oh my gosh, it's yoga and I have to go to a class and I have to roll out a mat and I have to take all this time. But realistically, a couple of poses can sometimes make you feel amazingly better. So your breath is always available to you. It's a really great way to practice mindfulness, to practice meditation. You don't need complicated guided meditations. If those work for you, that's great. Um, but your breath is always available. You can always pay attention to your breath. So this breath work activates the parasympathetic nervous system. It may ease the fight, flight, or freeze response. Um, and it helps you with mindfulness. So sitting up nice and tall, and you can also do this from a standing pose. Again, I encourage you to check in with your breath, see how that feels. And after you've just checked in for a couple of inhales, and a couple of exhales, Try making that exhale just a little bit longer than the inhale. Just breathing. And sometimes we have the monkey mind. We try to be mindful and the monkey mind says, oh, well, what about this? And what about this? And oh my gosh, and here's my grocery list. And here, these things are happening. If that happens, be compassionate with yourself, be gentle, just notice, oh, I was thinking, and gently pull your attention just back to your breath. And you can just check in with the breath. Um, you're never not going to think. People think, I can't meditate, it's too hard, my brain is too busy, I, I can't be mindful. but. You're always going to be thinking thoughts. That's what you want your brain to do. But with practice, you can come to a point where you don't engage with those thoughts. And if you've experienced trauma, this, this may be harder. This may be harder to do. Um, and it's just really one more tool for your toolbox. There's a lot of different things, yoga, breath work, mindfulness that you can practice. Um, and that may help with trauma. Namaste. And then these are the books that I used to help me put this together.